All right, folks, welcome to the, co the concurrent perp perpendicular bisectors of a triangle theorem, which is already going to be a bit of a mouthful. So, effectively, uh, the, the, the I guess the theorem states that the perp perpendicular bisectors of a triangle are concurrent. So, effectively, it means that we draw a triangle, we're going to draw the perpendicular bisectors, and it turns out that the, they are going to be concurrent. And it turns out that uh, where they meet, if you draw a circle around the triangle, it turns out they meet at what the, the, the actual center, which we call the circumcircle. So, uh, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to construct this in GeoGebra to begin with. So, I've got a circle here, and uh, you'll have to excuse me looking up there because that's where the monitor I've got this the screen on is. So, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to I'm going to construct a polygon. I'm going to choose three arbitrary points, and then uh, A, B, and C, and then that's going to be my polygon. And then uh, I've, got, I've got all these points. Now, what I want is the, the perpendicular bisector. So here in GeoGebra, I'm not sure if you can do that in the web version, but I'm using the desktop version here. So here I can choose a perpendicular bisector. And it, and if you read the little thing at the bottom, it says two points or one line segment. So I can click on the perpendicular bisector here for this one for D, for, for this one for segment A, and for this one for segment C. And you'll find that already they go through the center of the circle, which I've labeled O. And uh, what 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 effectively happens is that I can actually and and because of the way I've constructed this, I can actually kind of move things around just to see. Okay, well, does this still remain true no matter how I move the edges around, no matter how big, small, degenerate? And like say, if I move the triangle here and they intersect outside the triangle, you can still see that they intersect. Um, they still intersect at the center of the circle when you draw the circle around the, the triangle. So, um, so it, in my opinion, this is pretty cool. So like I could do it like that. It will still go to the middle, still go to the middle. So if you, if you, if you cut, if you, if you're still not convinced for whatever reason, feel free to draw your own. Um, is it, in the, in the desktop version of GeoGebra, it's possible to also draw, a, it, it is also possible to construct a triangle through, through three points. So as a little exercise, what you can do is actually draw a triangle first using the polygon to any 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 of them, and then you can construct the circle through three points by actually selecting all the points. Actually, I can I could I should be able to demonstrate that pretty quickly. So Control A, delete everything. So I'm gonna con construct a polygon, just any arbitrary triangle. And then what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do is do the circle through three points. So click one, click the second, click the third, and then uh, actually I'm gonna put, I'm gonna move it back to mouse, center, center that. And then once again, I can construct my perpendicular bisectors. And then uh, if you want to know how to do it between two points, you click one point and you click the second one and then it will move as needed. And then once again, well, the, the only problem with the way doing doing it this way is that you can't quite see where the center of the circle is because like you haven't constructed the circle that way, but you can effectively eyeball that you can see, oh, okay, this looks like the center of the circle. So once so now that we've got that visual established, um, I'm gonna move straight on to the I'm gonna move straight on to actually formally proving it theorem Y. So I'm gonna switch that off and then we're gonna move down. So what I've got, I've got up there on the screen is that effectively we've got like a statement and we're kind of just reformulating it to 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 actually put it in form of the theorem. So so it starts by saying, okay, draw any any triangle and the perpendicular bisectors for two sides, we should meet at some point circumcenter. Draw a circle with this point at this center that reaches each vertex of the triangle. So it says draw any triangle and the perpendicular bisectors for two sides. And then, so so that's probably that's probably the thing I want to highlight right now. So I'm gonna make the highlighter a bit bigger. Uh, perpendicular bisectors for two sides. So that's that's the important bit. And then the theorem says show that the perpendicular of the bisector of the third side passes through the circumcenter. So, uh, so we'll, we'll start by drawing it first. So I'm actually I'm actually gonna I'm actually it's gonna be easier for me to draw the triangle. It's, it's, Actually, going to be easier for me to draw the circle first because notability allows uh, allows me to create a really nice circle. So I'm going to do just that, um, and then once again, I'm kind of, uh, once again, I'm just going to draw, just going to draw a tr just like saying a very arbitrary triangle. You can make it, you can make it any kind of triangle, like a degenerate triangle. Sorry, I don't even know what a degenerate triangle is. 
All right, what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to mark the mark roughly the half points. At this point, I'm just eyeballing it. It's just a sketch. It does not need to be perfect. So let's say let's say I'm going to mark uh let's say this point here that looks like the middle of that segment, and then and then um just kind of just it looks like about there. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to I'm going to draw my perpendicular bisectors. So I'm going to make sure it's at a right angle. It's perpendicular. It's it's perpendicular right angle bisector means cut in half. All right. So I'm going to just draw a pink line over that way. I'm going, to, I'm going to make sure it's about, um, yep, I'm going to make sure it's about at a right angle to the the edge of the triangle. I'm kind of just going to move my move, move around in my seat just to make sure I've got that right. Um, I know I'm fussing about it too much. Okay. <laughs> um, now, so, and then we need to show that the perpendicular bisector of the third side passes through the circumcenter. So basically we've got, we, 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 we need to make sure that the perpendicular bisector of that side passes through the circumcenter. So, uh, verbally I will explain what's going to happen because the, it's actually kind of pretty, pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. So actually, let me, let me, uh, so these are the two lines. So these are the initial, initial two sides. And then, and then, and then, and then, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna we're gonna draw a third side. I'm just rotating my iPad, so I'm gonna do roughly a bisector from here, and then I'm gonna draw a third side. That's gonna that's again, it's not perfect, but um, but uh, you know what? Because I'm because I'm very neurotic. I'm feeling very neurotic at the moment. Um, I will correct that. So, uh, let's do this, and then we'll do that. And then that should that should that should roughly do about it. So, and then this is the third side. Uh, interesting things are happening. Okay, so what I'm going to do is that I'm also going to mark this as the circumcenter. So that's going to be the circumcenter. So actually, I should jot that down as well. So. Okay, and that's the third side. So. We need to ask ourselves, uh, what do we know? Well, let let's say, let's say we we drew the third side line, but what we don't know is whether it actually passes through the middle of the circle. So, and um, so and we want to try and understand that logic. So, firstly, the the first thing we know, the first thing we know that for the fact that it is a perpendicular bisector. We, well, the bisector part, it means that on this third part, it means these two lines, these two on the side are of equal length. So, um, and yeah, it means those, those, those two lines are of equal length. So is it because by definition, it's a bisector. Now, what we also know is that, um, uh, what we also know is that and then actually, so at, what we also know is that um, because we know we know this full line, which is also the chord of a circle, we know because of the bisector it's going to pass through the middle, um, and we also know that we also know that um, and we also know by definition. Sorry, we also know by definition this passes through the middle of the circle. Sorry, I said something wrong to begin with. So. Um, What's the, theory, what's, what's the idea I'm trying to say? Um, so what I'm trying to say is that this point is the middle of the chord and the core idea is that the middle of any chord of a circle it is um, the middle of any chord of the circle can be drawn will, or at least will be parallel to the line of a circle because if you can see like the, the same thing is happening here. We've got two... Uh, we've got e we've got equal edges here, and then we've got we've got equal edges here. You can see that if you draw any corner of a circle, then the middle of that can line up with the center of the circle, and that's effectively the that's effectively the theorem uh, kind of described verbally. So, um, so we'll we'll scroll down to the written proof, and where I've kind of got a, a different a, a different I guess a more formal version written up where it says let ABC be a, B, C, B, a triangle, create the perpendicular bisector to site A, B, and B, C, we intersect at the point P. So note here that we, uh, the note here that this version of the proof is rigorously labeling like all the points and all the lines. Sorry, all the points so that we can define all the lines with respect to those points. And, and the, the important, 
the important key the important key factor is here so what we did at the beginning when i drew the two sides was this first bit where uh and then let m be the midpoint of ac and then draw pm so so um so just to clarify these two are just to clarify so these two are the initial two lines and then and then uh and then this mp is the third line And what's happening here is that we've got AC, which is the quad of the circle, PM passes through the circle center and the quad center. And then, and that was actually the other thing I've got to mention. Um, the the cent I, when you draw the line that goes to the middle of the circle and the middle of the quad, it turns out that they're actually perpendicular. So as a result, that allows us to conclude that when we draw the third perpendicular bisector, it is concurrent with the other two perpendicular bisectors. So now the... The reason that we can just choose any edge edges without loss of generality, and which is going to be a common term in, in the proofs, is that um, by now you probably would have realized that it doesn't actually matter which two sides you begin with, because the third side is equivalent in definition to the other two, and as a result, they will all be concurrent together. So that's kind that's that's kind of the the the, gen, the general idea. So. It, it, so you'll find with this and I think the, the next couple of ones because I haven't looked that far ahead that um, most of them will follow the same idea we just need to be clear about what we what we define what's the what's the and what's the connecting idea so here the connecting idea for this one uh, is basically um, the, the connecting idea of this one is the fact that again the the center of a chord of a circle, is perpendicular to the line drawn to the center of the chord and the center and the circumcenter of the center of the circle. Sorry, if that was a bit of a mouthful. Hopefully, reading the written version might be a bit better. But until but until the next video.